Hello, Hello Dan. Good to see so, you. So, uh, Geelong Sustainability is new... Executive Commander. officer, yeah, yeah. Executive officer. <laughs> My role is really helping deliver Geelong sustainability strategy. So we've got this fantastic 2025 strategy for how we're going to um, address climate change, work on renewable energy, circular economy, sustainable cities. It's big, like there's so much there. And so being able to work in that role, supporting our committee, supporting our volunteers um, to be able to do more. So. Uh, I'm, I'm learning quickly and uh, uh, I, I think already setting up some exciting initiatives so uh, I can't wait to kind of really get stuck into it and get it moving. So what I think is great about the event today is a bit like it's looking into the future. Yeah. It's a little bit like this is where we will all be in five, ten years. But right now, it's just a little minority here, isn't it? We're just a few hundred people looking into I, I, the future. I think 350 so far or something close to that. So hopefully we can get 500 or 1,000 coming in today. But, but you're right. Um, we need this to be mainstream, don't we, for, for us to really solve the, the climate challenge that we've got. And yeah. Geelong's sustainability is not alone in, in the sense that, for instance, uh, the city council is here. Yes. Uh, yes. With EVs and with uh, an electric mower outside <laughs> and, yep. and so on. Yep. Um, and the council has a goal to become carbon neutral by 2025 for the council activities themselves. Yes. And then 10 years later by 2035 for the entire community. Yeah. Are you linking up with that? And and how do you see that? Is it, is it even achievable? Oh, yeah, a absolutely. So so we're um, really working in with, with the council as closely as we can and talking about ongoing partnerships and um, projects where we really work hand in hand as much as possible. Um, but I, I, th I think you, know, you asked, is it achievable? Like, this feels like the most exciting time to me because finally renewable energy is mainstream. Um, you know, look at the interest in circular economy. People are waking up to the waste problem and um, there's just so much interest. So the timing's right. 100% um, this is achievable. We just need the community movement behind it to, to get us going and, and get it happening. So, yeah. Um, Why should I buy an e-bike? So yeah, I mean, I guess the the main reason to buy one would be if you're interested in riding um, and you really want a, something that's going to make that riding easier for you. So say uh, you want to get to work and you're not completely sweaty at the time you get there, um, or if you have even just a commute that has quite a few hills, um, and that's the reason that you haven't been riding to work already. Um, if you've got an e-bike, uh, you don't have to always have the power on. You can use it when you need it. Um, and then basically turn it on, have that power, going up the hill, turn it back off, um, and be riding a normal bike again. Um, so, I mean, the yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'd say the, the main reasons for having one is to is to really um, stop it from stop you from having to ride to drive your car into work um, as well around town. Um, you can going to be riding a bike so you're out in the elements you're really like experiencing nature and everything um, but you're not working as hard as you would be with a normal bike um, so um, good cyclists here we're a social enterprise um, so 100 of our of our funds go towards helping youth um, get jobs and get skilled up um, we do sell e-bikes as well as standard bikes so um, if you're interested in any of those range, we're definitely here to help and we can um, get you sorted. Uh, we're also doing test rides today, so if you guys are interested in coming in and, and getting on a bike, um, we can definitely help you out. If you want to get more fitness gains when you're riding a bike, consider not getting an e-bike. Okay? Get a bike that's not powered and that's fully human powered. Just get the right kind of bike so that you're actually inspired to ride it. Okay? However, if you want to minimize your efforts and make sure that you've got plenty of um, energy to ride and uh, you're not you know, sweating before you get to work and you want that power assistance to help you along, then get an e-bike, okay? Does that make sense? All right, and this here is um, a type of road bike, okay? But not a racing road bike, but what's called a flat bar road bike, okay? So if you do know for sure that most of your riding is going to be just on road and you're going to never touch any gravel or do anything of that type, then potentially going for a nice sleek road bike like this that has flat handlebars and a little bit more of, a, uh, of an upright geometry on the bike. So instead of a racing road bike being a bit like this, 
instead you're holding the handlebars like this. A lot more comfortable, a lot more upright. And finally, for those of us who reacted inside when I asked, you want to ride more or less than two hours? And he thought, two hours? Never seen you riding that long. This is your bike. <laughs> This is a, a cruiser style bike. Um, it's a, a type of hybrid bike uh, that is very, very comfortable to ride. You literally sat like in an armchair when you're riding this bike. Very, very comfy, very, very soft. Um, this particular one has big fat tires to absorb all the vibration from the road, uh, to give you plenty of grip, plenty of confidence. Look at that saddle as well. Nice big saddle with springs on it. Very, very comfy. So for anyone who um, uh, wants to generally ride in a very sort of slow, um, chatty, chat with your friends, you know, um, easy ride to the shops and back, easy ride to the beach and back, um, might do a couple of hours riding in a day, but not, you know, in one foul hit. So it would be, you know, ride five minutes, go for a coffee, ride 15 minutes, uh, have a chat, etc., etc. Maybe go for a picnic. This is your kind of bike. You know, the, the point is that you have a vision for your transport future that is not based on fossil fuels. Um, that might be because you're worried about the cost of it, or you're worried about, you know, uh, fuel security for the country, or most likely you're more concerned about climate change, and you know that burning petrol is not the way to get going. Um, an example of uh, how far you can take the, um, the dream is uh, th this guy uh, we know well in... Uh, up near Hawkesbury River, north of Sydney, is converting an old Sydney ferry to electric. Um, we, we set up the drivetrain out of a, a Hyundai Ionic electric vehicle that had been in a wreck. We pulled it apart, we took the battery, and we sent the, the motor and gearbox up to him, and it's now installed in the, uh, the bilge of that ferry, um, replacing a one and a half ton diesel motor. And it'll, it'll have more power than the original diesel. It's just absurd. Um, an example of how far you can you can take it. It doesn't matter what your dream is. The point is, he wanted something. Um, he actually got the ferry for nothing. Is it a, a long story to that? Um, but uh, he's taking something that was junk. It was it was destined to be scrapped, and turning it into something that's actually inspiring. Um, okay, this this vehicle's up the road, uh, up the end of the wall there. This is uh, a. 1999 MGF. Uh, the, the guy Mark owned it since it was new. Petrol vehicle. It blew its motor three times. Eventually, the motor was that damaged. This is over the course of you know 20 years of ownership. The motor was that damaged, so we're going to have to completely replace the motor uh, with another petrol motor, which was only going to do it the same thing again. They're notorious cars for having overheating problems. Instead of spending seven and a half grand on um, replacing the petrol motor, he spent 15 grand on cobbled together second-hand PV bits, and together we built it up as a you know, backyard volunteer in the in the carport over about two years, turned it into an electric vehicle with about 120k range and performance about similar to a Tesla 3, uh, Tesla Model 3. So it's quite nippy. Um, so the summary of the. the the good stuff, you get um, a much better performance, um, even from the same power motor. There's reasons for that, you can ask for that. Um, you get better use of your energy, so I charge my EV on solar at home. Um, and all of the stuff that you're not doing because you don't have an internal combustion engine. Even if you are charging your EV off the grid in, in Victoria, the dirtiest grid in Australia, it is still better environmentally in terms of emissions than a petrol vehicle. You know, if you go class for class, vehicle for vehicle, even in Victoria, you just squeak it in, it's just better. Of course, if you're in, you know, New South Wales or Tasmania or you know, South Australia, it's way better. And if you're charging from your home on solar, it's, it's effectively zero emission. Um, way less noise, you, you can drive with the windows up and still hear the birds, you know, in, in the trees. Um, I, we, I live on a farm, so my, my oldest and Lee lives on a farm, travels gravel, gravel roads every day. I have to keep a much better lookout for the kangaroos because they don't hear me coming. Um, so 
you know, just driving your headlights on, whatever. Um, less servicing, I said, less fuel costs, less overall life cycle costs. So the life cycle from buying it to eventual disposal, for you know, the whole life of the vehicle, once you take into servicing lower fuel costs, um, EVs are just breaking even now. So you can, and if you get one second hand, it's even better. And ultimately, less waste because you can repurpose, this is what we do, is repurpose those electric vehicle components into other vehicles. Uh, the batteries can, can be reused after their life as an electric, battery, electric vehicle battery can be reused for household use and then recycled. Um, so it fits, fits the circular economy and zero waste part really quite well. Um, so any questions? 